is good everybody welcome back to another my damn toys video today we're going to be talking about what happened last night on monday night raw with the superstar shakeup of course during the superstar shakeup guys what happens is that we get superstars from smackdown live going over to monday night raw and we get superstars from monday night raw going over to smackdown live we also get nxt call-ups sometimes you know debuts surprises and things of that nature and my god what the hell did we get on monday night raw so i guess we could just run down the list of superstars that did move over from where Wherever they were over to Monday Night Raw as of this article that I'm reading from ESPN. So we have The Miz, The Viking Experience, formerly known as War Raiders, the NXT Tag Team Champions. We're going to we're going to cut into that in just a second, but let's let's continue the list, shall we? My boy Cedric Alexander, Andrade Cien Almas, Rey Mysterio, Ricochet and Alistair Black, The Usos, Naomi, EC3, Eric Young, Lacey Evans, and the phenomenal AJ Styles. So to be real with you guys, this uh, this name change that they d that they've done to the War Raiders, the, the beloved NXT Tag Team Champions. Everybody loved them in NXT. They've been putting on Match of the Year candidates with everybody that they step foot in the ring with in NXT at every single takeover, guys. These guys are just absolutely tearing the house down, just proving why they are the NXT Tag Team Champions. They were babyface in NXT. You call them up to the main roster, and Vince McMahon and his team and his terrible horror terrific creative unit decide let's change their name to the viking experience and uh, to be honest with you guys i swear to jesus i think that they j legitimately changed it to some sort of viking name to go along with the popularity of things like game of thrones and all of that stuff i don't watch game of thrones but i'm pr i swear i promise you it just i don't know that just seems like something vince mcmahon would do and he would do that i swear that that's true but anyways guys there's a lot to break down here about monday night raw i mean aj styles is over on monday night Raw now. That is something that I, I honestly want to look at as a positive light because there are so many negative things about Monday Night Raw guys. It, it's nearly, I mean it's pretty much unbearable and unwatchable like outside of maybe one good segment a week, the whole three hour show is a total waste of time. They insult your intelligence on a weekly basis and it's just a bad show overall man. They give us repetitive, boring, crappy match after match that we've seen a hundred million times, but I think that AJ Styles could easily come in and, and sort of adjust that. I think that he could easily have a positive impact, and um, it's going to be interesting to see him on Monday Night Raw. I, ho I hope that it brings it a breath of effing fresh air, because the show desperately freaking needs it. But that War Raiders name change, man, I, I just want to shake my head. It makes me just want to just... I, I just don't understand where this company thinks, where their, where their brain is, is logically like I do not get where they get these things from why they make the decisions that they make but um yeah I mean and, and road dogs on Twitter just defending this I I just don't agree with this man but let's kind of move on and focus on something else here guys we also had the Usos joining over on Monday Night Raw and I think this is epic for the tag division I know that you took away the best tag team and the best overall superstar from Smackdown Live and hopefully that will adjust to Monday Night Raw and hopefully the Usos can bring some legitimacy and you can have some great matchups with them over on Monday Night Raw with the tag team divisions. I think the Revival would be an epic clash for the Usos. Aleister Black and Ricochet, it looks like they are going to be maintaining a tag team per persona which I do not agree with at all but you know it does look like uh, if they were to have a match with the Usos I'm sure it would be terrific. I don't know man, I just want legitimate tag teams and I want a, a good tag team division for all the teams to get in there and have great tag team wrestling. You guys see it in NXT every single time. The main roster needs to follow what NXT does with their tag team division, and we need to have epic clashes like that every single time, just like in NXT. The Miz, I kind of felt like he would come over, you know, that whole storyline with, with Shane McMahon, he, you know, he beat him up. He, we even had some blood from The Miz here on Monday Night Raw, so uh, not only does he move over to, over to Monday Night Raw, but he does it in style, matching with the crimson blood that came out of his skull. I don't know how I feel about him being a babyface over on Monday Night Raw. I think that's going to be interesting to see where we go from here, and we really don't know all the heels that he has to go to battle with, considering you know, we still have SmackDown Live to go through with the Superstar Shake-Up. They could take away some heels, add some heels, take some baby fat. I mean, we don't know the, the exact result of the Superstar Shake-Up just yet, but we will after tonight, and uh, we can see what storylines will move forward with The Miz. Another thing that I want to talk about is my boy Cedric Alexander coming over to Monday Night Raw. It's kind of weird because, you know, uh, he's following the same steps as Mustafa Ali, but I hope it turns out the same way. You know, Mustafa Ali, when he got to SmackDown Live, he did 
fantastic things. He was having great gauntlet matches and great one-on-one -on -one matches. He had a fantastic, he had match of the night. One of my favorite matches of the year thus far at Fastlane with Kevin Owens and Daniel Bryan. Hopefully Cedric Alexander gets that same amount of treatment. Maybe we can get him with an IC title before the end of the year. Since Finn Balor didn't, uh, or since Samoa Joe didn't show up on Monday Night Raw, I don't think Finn Balor is going to be going over to SmackDown Live. So it looks like Andrade and Finn Balor will most likely be your Intercontinental Championship feud moving forward. What also sucks is you pinned Finn Balor. I love Andrade seeing Almas, but you can't pin the champion, man. Why, can, why Why? did it have to be a big deal? You bring back Sami Zayn and he loses. Why couldn't Cian Almas lose here to Finn Balor? It wouldn't have hurt his stock at all, but I guess this is going to be your Intercontinental Championship feud, so in order to have that take place in the future, you had to have him pin the champion so that he could get a deserved title opportunity, but you could have done that in a more creative way instead of making your champion lose, but that's, you know, another thing. Sanity splitting away from Eric Young, guys. This is I, you can pretty much call EC3, you can call Eric Young, you can call those guys completely buried. There's no way that Eric Young's going to make any sort of splash. I, just, I mean, as Sanity, as a part of Sanity, it was terrible. He was treated like trash. There's no way in hell this man gets any sort of push. I, know, I think in TNA, he did have a nice singles push. I, I don't know the extent of it. I didn't watch TNA too in depth when he was there, but I don't think it's going to live up to that expectation. I feel like he was sort of a main player on the TNA when he was there, and I just don't see that happening here um, on Monday Night Raw, especially as big of a show it is, as it is. I just don't see that happening, guys. So Eric Young is pretty much done in the water. We also had Naomi and Lacey Evans, which is another thing. Why did Lacey Evans and Natalia, why did they even get a number one contendership? I kind of see where Lacey Evans could just because, you know, she just comes out and attacks Becky Lynch and Becky Lynch wants a title match with her or wants a match with her. But Natalia, she was just in a tag team match at Mania and then she just comes out of nowhere and is like, I get the number Number one, I'm the best number number one contender. So that made no sense, and Lacey Evans obviously wins. We all saw that coming from a mile away. We have Rey Mysterio now. He gets attacked by Lars Sullivan, and Rey Mysterio got more offense in on Lars Sullivan than the tag team champion Hardy Boys did last week on SmackDown Live after they won the tag titles. I know that they had just went through a match, but uh, two on one compared to a five foot seven man to a six foot nine man or whatever the hell it is is completely different, guys. And I, I just, I, I don't know, man. Monday Night Raw just gives me headaches. It makes me it's so upset just to see the way they book it. I, SmackDown Live is much better by a mile, but at the same time, SmackDown Live is not a perfect show, and it definitely has its flaws, but it's a hell of a lot better than Monday Night Raw. It, it is just way better. It's a breath of fresh air. Seeing the blue color, I don't know what it is about seeing the Monday Night Raw red and black and white. But it's just not, I don't know, it puts me to sleep. It's very boring looking, and the blue is so much more refreshing. Why do you think I've been to four SmackDowns in the last year, and I haven't been to any Monday Night Raws? I can actually attend a SmackDown Live event and say, you know what, that was a solid show. Uh, I don't feel like my intelligence has been insulted. I don't feel as if I was just sitting here for three hours watching just ridiculous garbage take place on my television. They're also playing into the fact that Sasha Banks, you know, she's taking a break after she wanted to quit after WrestleMania. 35 or before WrestleMania 35. So they're writing that into storyline now with Bailey and everything. So I, I don't know, man. I know that there were some issues with the show. They talked about, you know, how uh, there were travel issues getting to Canada and there were storms taking place and some people didn't make the show. So they booked the show on the fly. But it, what do they book Monday Night Raw every single week on the fly? This is the importance of long-term storytelling and long-term booking is that you have months and months to prepare. Like, if you write shows three months in advance, you don't have to worry about stuff like that. If you, would, I know that injuries happen and curveballs happen and things of that nature happen, but you can easily adjust them if you write in. You could write a plan B, man. You can write this. You can write that. So, I don't know, man. It, another thing that I wanted to add is that Seth Rollins still looks fantastic with that Universal title. Finn Balor looks great with that IC title. It's refreshing to see AJ Styles on Monday Night Raw. I'm actually kind of uh, thrilled to see where he goes, where my boy Cedric goes, where the Usos go. I am excited to see that, but this show is just terrible. We got the stupid buzzard coming. We got the dolls and the, the dollhouse and stuff with Bray Wyatt, it seems. And that freaking Viking experience, man. What What is what is happening? I don't know, guys, but that was pretty much my reactions to Monday Night Raw last night. The show just gives me a headache. It's, it's so hard to watch. I question my 
my sanity and I question every single thing that the, this company does every single Monday night. I'm just like, why is this happening? Why are we getting this? Another six-man tag, another eight-man tag, just repetitive boring storylines and the same matchups and the same tag teams over and over and over and over. It's like I, wa I am watching the same show every single week just in like a, like slightly changed, like like 0.4% of it's changed, but the rest is the exact same. So hopefully these shows moving forward can get a little better with the Superstar Shake-Up guys. I just, I, I just need a breath of fresh air and of new talent. And hopefully the, this pool is very talented. All these men and women that were called to Mon Monday Night Raw or are very talented and I believe in them um, but uh, I don't want to give WWE or Monday Night Raw, Raw Creative any sort of leeway because I, I know what this company is capable of and I know that they can run all of it into the ground in a matter of minutes. Just look at the War Raiders. I mean, where were their, where were their tag team championships? They didn't even have the NXT Tag Team Championships. Uh, hopefully on Wednesday we find out what the hell happened. Are they taking away their titles? Are they still the champions? Or are we going to get, are they going to give it up on Wednesday? I don't know. But I guess all of this will have to be seen. But tonight on SmackDown Live, guys, hopefully we get a, a better show than we got with Monday Night Raw. I'm going into it with an open mind. I do this every week. I, I rip into Raw and I talk about Raw and I talk about how terrible it was and then I'm like, well, I'm excited to see what they do for SmackDown. But it's the truth. I mean, I, I want to have good faith. I want to, I don't want to come on here and rip into the shows, guys. I love wrestling. I love WWE. I love the talent. I love this this hobby and I want to talk about it in a passionate capacity and I hope that's what you guys see when I'm talking about the shows. I don't want to rip into it. I'm just telling you what they could do so much better. They have the most talent. They have all the money in the world. They could make the best shows possible. Just look at NXT and if you don't watch NXT, you're making a big mistake for yourself. Like I said, I love professional wrestling. I love WWE, and I just want to see the product thrive. I want, I don't like to see talent mistreated. As an athlete myself, I have seen this take place in my life. I have seen athletes and talents be not treated to the capacity that maybe they should be, and I've seen the impact that it can have. Like, you could have, these these talents deserve the absolute best. They're the most talented in the world. Let's, let's give us some good television, let's give us some good product, and let's have great professional wrestling and storytelling. That's what it's all about. But that pretty much does it for your Monday Night Raw Superstar Shake-Up review and results and all that good stuff. I probably will be back here tomorrow with SmackDown Live's version, guys. So if you guys want to stay tuned for that, please turn on your bell for all the notifications. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.